pick your class and learn your battle points because it's time for the Star Wars Battlefront podcast. This episode of the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast is brought to you by our patrons on Patreon. Head over to patreon.com slash battlefrontpodcast to help support this show. We're also brought to you by our PayPal supporters, paypal.me slash tie-dye sheep, T-Y-E-D-Y-E-S-H-E-E-P. This episode is also brought to you by Star Wars Gaming Network, starwarsgaming.net, your online resource for Star Wars Battlefront. Welcome to episode 109 of the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. I'm your host, Sage Goodwin, joined by my brother and co-host, Sam Goodwin. Now, now, now! In this episode, we'll be going over the arcade mode in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Is it what we wanted and more? Let's get started. Before the beginning of every episode like to let you know that this is the star this is the um, third episode in our daily podcast episode schedule so for at least seven days we'll be doing one episode a day this is the uh, third episode in our daily podcast episode series where we're breaking down everything that's included in uh, the star wars battlefront 2 game this whole series is brought to you by our patrons and paypal supporters as well as our new sponsor the star wars gaming network We'll get into uh, what they are all about later on in the episode, but this is all brought to you by our amazing supporters and longtime listeners. Now let's get on to arcade mode. Let's get started with what arcade mode is. So the arcade mode is essentially a broke, broken down version of the game and has different game modes that you can play and it's trying to be like the original Battlefront 2 in instant action so you can have heroes versus villains in the game to where you can fight your buddy you can have battle scenarios or you can make your own custom game mode to fit and suit your play style in Battlefront 2015 we had missions which a lot of people criticized they were okay they they weren't very good long term ways to play offline and then later on we got skirmish which was a multiplayer or two multiplayer game modes offline with the base uh, maps included so that was walker assault and uh, starfighter assault or fighter squadron fighter squadron yes. too much battlefront 2 sage i know not actually it's not enough yes oh <laughs> But a lot of people criticize that for not being the instant action of the childhood. Of the childhood. Of, of the everyone childhood. Everyone has the childhood. Yes, everyone has the childhood. But it, it, it was criticized. Rightly so. It, it, was not, it was not as a lot of fans wanted, which was a, a rich and deep offline experience. But Battlefront 2 has a lot of interesting and unique ways to play offline. You have the solo missions, so you can complete different uh, objectives and different game modes offline to earn online credits and um, rewards. If you complete all of the light side game modes, where maybe you're going to be either Han or Leia defeating troopers, or you're going to be a uh, jump trooper or a Wookiee defeating AI bots. If you go through that whole list of, I think it's about 20, 16 to 20 game modes of little missions, you get a light side crate. Same for the dark side. If you complete all the solo offline missions for the dark side, you will get a, an exclusive dark side crate. And it's it's really fun to do that. Um, and there's also the co-op mission, so you can do that with, do even more unique stuff where it's split screen co-op. We haven't had any feedback on whether we'll be able to play with uh, our friends online through uh, either PlayStation Network or Xbox Live or uh, Origin on PC. We haven't had any confirmation that we'll be able to do that, but offline split screen, it is super fun. It is. I've played all of the co-op battle scenarios, and they were actually really fun. There were certain ones that you know, were alright, and there were some that were really fun. It all depends on how 
the game modes are customized and as I said you can customize a game mode for yourself and others which is cool yeah so you can choose whether you want it to be heroes only or if you want it to be a free-for-all or do you want it to be troopers only you uh, can uh, customize how many bots are in there how you win like say you want to you have to defeat a hundred troops or, or if you're doing heroes how many lives you each have or how much damage you can take you could be one shot or you can be twice the damage half the damage or half health twice the health uh, one shot health you can have faster reloads of your abilities it is greatly customizable on how you want to play it is sage and i've played at like four customized game modes but really i like to stick with the 100 troop lives it feels so much like the conquest of battlefront 2 just without the capturing objective part you know just you have a certain amount of troops and then you're trying to defeat the other team yeah it's it's really fun you have a time limit you can set the time limit if you want to do custom uh, but basically all i i like to do with the co-op ones is set the ai to 100 normal difficulty and then have faster reload time of my abilities because that's so much fun just to keep on destroying and destroying going through bots so now before our short break let's talk about our sponsor which is the star wars gaming network the star wars gaming network is an online resource for everything Star Wars Battlefront. You can go on there. My favorite part of it is uh, the resources section. So you can choose on uh, whether you want the resources for Star Wars Battlefront 2015 or Star Wars Battlefront 2 2017. Uh, you can click on these and it shows you what maps were on there, what game modes were included, what DLC was, what heroes there were. It is really, really good. It also uh, features news, uh, has a forum section. They've also got a uh, tournament section to where you can set up uh, matches and that kind of stuff. It is a really, really nice website as well. Um, really well put together. It's got news tickets in uh, a little section. So on every page you can see what's going on. Like right now, I see that Cinematic Tools has been uh, up updated for Star Wars Battlefront 2, which is awesome. I see that, uh, like we talked about uh, last episode, with, uh, actually uh, the episode before last, talking about the pay to win system, it shows news about that. It's a really, really nicely done website. Um, it is a uh, place for Star Wars gaming and news, a tournament system where teams can play against each other, and it offers free mini sites and private forums for teams so you can uh, hang out and uh, try some tournament play. So definitely check that out at StarWarsGaming.net. Really cool website, especially if you want to see what's included in the game and uh, also talk to some other Star Wars Battlefront 2 fans. Now after a short break, we'll get on to if Star Wars Battlefront 2's arcade mode is what we really wanted for the second iteration of EA's Battlefront franchise. You're listening to the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast, a podcast from the Tie-Dye Sheep Entertainment Podcast Network, a network dedicated to bringing content as great and as weird as the hosts. If you'd like to support us on a Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash battlefrontpodcast. You can donate $1 up to $10, and we have different tiers for that. So if you'd like to support the show and get some exclusive content, because we'll be doing bonus shows there, you can support us through that link. And at $1 per month, you have the ability to come on the podcast if you so desire. Let's take a little trip down memory lane. So in Star Wars Battlefront 2 came out in 2005, uh, the one on the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox as well as PC, they had a thing called uh, Instant Action, where you would uh, play through and pick a playlist of game modes. So one was Conquest, which was a trooper-based game mode where you would go around the map and capture points. It was a pretty simple game mode, um, you had a set amount of troopers, and each time you died, you lost a trooper. Each time would have that uh, happen, and then you would try to capture each of the points on the map. Another thing was capture the flag. Really weird game mode in the original one. Really hard to play now. Um, they, it offered a bunch of unique 
offline experiences. And that's that's what a lot of fans wanted in the first Battlefront by EA, Battlefront 2015. So personally, I think that Battlefront 2's arcade mode is definitely better than its predecessor, meaning Battlefront 2015. But then when you start looking at Battlefront 2's instant action, I actually personally prefer the offline instant action, but basically the whole game's offline now. But the instant action on Battlefront 2 original is just so amazing about how they got to make all of those maps in that game in 2005, which is amazing. But now we still have Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2's offline has more content than the original. This one, currently? Yes. When, you, when you're thinking of pure missions and game modes, it's got way more. But just the varying maps in original Battlefront 2 just makes it seem that much more in-depth. I know you can't like do 1v1 heroes in the Battlefront 2 and Battlefront original, but you know they have Assault Mode which is like the coolest thing ever, having AI heroes as well as multiple of the same heroes and villains. That's what Which I is love. Crazy. Yeah, so you could have four Darth Mauls in the same game mode, five Darth Vaders, uh, General Grievous is out the wazoo. That that's my favorite thing. That's the thing I most miss from the first Battlefront 2. Yes, assault and hunt. Yeah, hunt was pretty fun. Hunt was not pretty fun. It was really fun. It was super unbalanced though. And if you don't know, a hunt was a game mode where one side was regular troopers and the other side was the indigenous species of that planet. So in Hoth, you got to play as the Wampas, Wampas. against rebels and stormtroopers. On Indoor, you'd be the Ewoks. Yeah. Those little furballs were so hard to kill. They always win. So I kind of miss just playing as those beasts in Battlefront 2. But, you know, we still have Battlefront 2 current right now that you know just because this the arcade isn't as good in my opinion as the original battlefront 2 it balances out with all of the other extensive content yeah it's you like i was a, saying earlier a really solid multiplayer you have a solid campaign and then the arcade on top of that yeah and the arcade when you're looking at it without any nostalgia in battlefront 2 20, uh, 2017 it has more content than the original. It is very, very different content than the original Battlefront 2. Which I think was maybe... It doesn't really have one of those big objective matches, but it's got a bunch of smaller missions. It yeah, definitely, if you look at battle scenarios, not the, uh, you know, how you can uh, customize your yeah, own not missions. not the custom scenarios. But the battle scenarios where you get to play... At least the equivalent of arcade and original Battlefront 2 does not have as much. And you know, maps are a lot of content, but still, when you have the, all these battle scenarios, which are new and fresh... And they're all very, very unique. It adds something that I think complements Battlefront 2 but, very well. But you can never beat instant action, ever. Instant action was super fun because you it got to... It is super fun. Yeah. It still is. We've got Battlefront 2 on the PlayStation 2. We play that quite frequent, uh, frequently. Um, it, it's it's really fun. I don't play the campaign because... The campaign is I just don't horrendous. have the patience for it. Yeah, I just play Instant Action, which is an amazing, amazing game. Instant Action was great because you got to pick the game modes you want to play um, out of the... It, most of the time it was the two game modes. Uh... Conquest and capture the flag, depending on the maps that you chose, because only uh, hero hero assault was only available on Mos Eisley. Yeah, so there was just the four game modes, I believe, that conquest, capture the flag, assault, and hunt. Yeah, but what what was great is you got to pick how many maps you want to play, what what era of Star yeah. Wars you wanted to play. The best part is you can have it on a loop. Yeah, so you get to you. you can just keep on playing through all of these, and it's randomized. Yeah, you can shuffle it and do all that. I think that's what most people miss about Battlefront 2, the original, and its offline offerings. But but let's answer the question: Is 
is Star Wars Battlefront 2's arcade mode, is that what we wanted in Battlefront 2? For me, apart from original Battlefront 2 and my expectations from Battlefront 2015, it definitely th- blew my expectations out of the water with the content. Yeah, I was like, expecting... I was expecting a, a better skirmish. Yeah, exactly. More more game modes and that kind of stuff. I was not expecting something completely yeah, different. Because when we heard the early trailers, they were describing it as skirmish rather than arcade. Yeah, that, that, was, the in, that was the initial name for it, was skirmish. Yeah, but then we start starts developing as, you know, the yeah, side the, of Battlefront 2. In the uh, This is Star Wars Battlefront 2 trailer, uh, John Boyega says it's arcade mode, and that's what it's called in Battlefront 2. So something definitely changed in development, but I think it's for the better. Yeah, and I don't know how much playability we're going to get out of the arcade mode. But currently, you know, we still have the dark and light side battle scenarios. We still can mess around with heroes and villains. And then if you get bored of that, you can just go to multiplayer. Which, you know, multiplayer never gets stale. Because there's you never have the same game twice. Yeah. As long as you love Battlefront, it won't go stale. Exactly. As long as you have the wide variety of, of maps. And, you know, the, hopefully they will improve and expand the game modes currently in Battlefront 2. But for the time being, we got a lot of hours to put in Battlefront 2. Exactly. Uh, But that's all for this episode of the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. I'm your host, Sage Goodwin. And I'm Sam Goodwin. You can follow us on Twitter at SWB Podcast, twitter.com slash SWB Podcast. You can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Battlefront Podcast, or PayPal paypal.me slash tie-dye sheep t-y-e-d-y-e-s-h-e-e-p would really appreciate that give us whatever you uh, feel this episode was worth to you and the content that we bring to you uh, we would really really appreciate it if you'd like to support us without uh, costing you anything at all you can leave us a review on itunes just uh, head over uh, you can do it on your PC, you can do it on your Mac, you can do it on your phone. Just search Star Wars Battlefront Podcast and click leave us a review. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Also, share it with your uh, Battlefront buddies. We would really appreciate that. We have a Discord. The link will be in the description. It's a super, super fun place to talk about the podcast, talk about Battlefront 2, uh, get into parties with people. Definitely want to make that a positive place to talk Battlefront 2. Our YouTube channel is the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. Just search that on YouTube and our uh, YouTube channel should show up. We've hit 250 subscribers on that. Really, really awesome. I am uh, editing a ton of videos to upload right now with gameplay. We'll, uh, we'll return to putting gameplay in the back of every podcast episode that we upload. It's going to be fun doing that. Uh, you can email us, uh, feedback comments topic suggestions all that kind of stuff battlefrontpodcast at gmail.com also thanks to our sponsor star wars gaming network go check that out in the description starwarsgaming.net you can listen to the show on itunes soundcloud stitcher google play or anywhere you find podcasts as always thanks for listening and may the force be with you